All right, let's log into Splunk. And let's navigate to where our lookups reside, into settings, lookups. And we'll go into lookup table files and new lookup table file. I'm going to leave it in the destination app of search and reporting. And I'm going to upload this mock data CSV file. We're going to use this as a lookup. If we take a look into the data, we can see that there's ID numbers, first names, last names, email, IP, state, latitude, and longitude for different people. So uh, I just generated some mock data with that. I'm just going to call this people info, and it's a CSV, so .csv. And I'm going to use this as our lookup. So we can click Save, change the permissions, put it in search, read and write for admin, and let's set the definition. Actually, before we set the definition, let's go back and just demo the input lookup command. So let's input and just view the data associated with this CSV file. So it's just input lookup and then the name of the file. And you, as you can see, it's a one for one match of what you would see in that Excel document. You can scroll through all the pages if you want. I think I did like a thousand entries. Yeah, 1000 entries. So there it is. And we can filter even more. Let's say we want to filter on specific users. We can do a where and then a first name. And we can just pick a first name here. Let's go uh, with Henry. So let's see all the Henrys we have. i run this. And just the one, Henry Blanchard in Cali. Okay, um, let's do another one that will get multiple results returned. And this is just, you know, really basic input lookup command querying your data that exists in the file. So if we filter on state, we'll definitely get multiple values back for that. Uh, we could just pick any state. New York, that's got a lot of people, not that it's really relevant to this file, but we'll just do where state equals New York. And we'll run this. And we see multiple users, 47, reside in the state of New York. So that's just a quick way to use your lookup to query and get information with the input lookup command with where as an argument. Let's set the definition. Filter back on ones that I've created. I have none, so we have to make the definition. Gonna keep it in search. I'm gonna name it the same thing, people info. And it's a file based, and this is where you could set it to KB store, like I mentioned earlier for a dynamic data, but ours is static. And we select the same name, people info.csv. And this is where you could set all the definitions that you wanted. You can do a time-based lookup, uh, which is a little advanced for power user. And you can do your advanced options. The minimum and maximum categories are for the number of matches for each lookup uh, value. The default matches, that's the default value to output. And you can do case sensitivity if you wanted. The batch index query can improve performance for if you had larger lookup files. Uh, match type, supplies format for non-existing matches. And filter lookup, that's where you can filter results before returning the data. Again, a little too advanced for a power user, but just um, good information to have as a side note. Lookups can get crazy, but we're going to keep it very simple in this mod. So if we had set any uh, definitions, go ahead and click save. And this is where we would find them. And edit if we wanted. And then just out of a habit, I always change my permissions for any knowledge object I create. And let's go back into search and reporting and start querying our lookups. So let's go into the index of web. Actually, let's make another, let's use that product ID example uh, that we spoke about in lecture for defining what the products would actually be. So there's the field product ID. Let's just table that out real quick to see our values um, and just dedupe it because I want to get one for one. Okay, so these product IDs, looks like we have 16 
results. Um, they don't really tell me what kind of product was purchased or viewed or added to cart or removed. Um, so just to make sure we have 16. Okay, yep, the search has completed. Um, you can also just change your rows if you don't want to look at the number in parentheses. Just show row values, and then you can just... It's a little easier. 16, boom. Okay, so I'm actually going to export this as a CSV, and I'm going to name it product info. And go ahead and export. And I'm going to save it. Yes, I'm making a look up the... Uh, lazy way, but this is how I would do it in a real environment anyways. So these are all my matches, same for the query we, we just ran. And now if I wanted to add what the product actually was, let's say I knew in the company um, what each code meant, and I wanted to add additional information to this field and the field values, well, now you can do that. So I'm quickly going to add in some descriptions for uh, products you might buy at a sporting goods store. Um, just really arbitrary values here, just to demonstrate how, how lookups can be a benefit for enriching your fields and field values that already exist. So we'll just quickly fill this out here. Thinking of 17 or 16 different store items took me a long time, so we'll just speed it up a little bit. Okay, now it's done. Go ahead and save it. And we will add it as a new lookup. So I'll go back into settings, lookups. Lookup table files and new lookup table file. Leave it in search. We're going to select that file we just created, product info, and give it a name. I'm just going to keep it the same product info.csv. Click save. Filter on mine. Change the permissions. Oops, it would help if I went into the correct lookup. So keep it in search, read for everyone, write for admin. Click save, and there we go. Permissions look good. Let's go and query it. So now that we know we have the product IDs from our fields, let's see how we can pull information from the index of web and our new lookup that we just created. So we'll filter on action is purchase, and we'll use our lookup command in the name of our lookup file, product info, with an input field that comes from the lookup file, which we have in there as product ID. And then I want to output the description. I am taking the outputted field of description and enriching my results that I can query in the search to use both of these. And then I'm just gonna table off product ID and description. We'll search over all time because index of web, my data is static in there. Look at command, it was a, uh, uh, forgot CSV, my bad. Rerun this. Okay, let me just do a quick where is not null, so it cleans up a little bit. And rerun. Okay, so. Now we have all of our 5,700-ish events that have fields with product IDs when someone made a purchase. And we now have a description. And the description field, again, came from the lookup. So now I want to know what kind of products sold how much in quantity. And now that I have a description, I can kind of get a better idea of what we sold the most of and what we sold the least of. So we can do a stats count by product ID and description. Or you could have just done it by description. And again, we'll filter out our null values. And I'm also going to sort by most sold to least sold. Is not, oh, can't spell. Is not null, not full. And there we are. We see we sold the most of golf balls, 275, and one belt. So this is just a way to give extra value to your fields by using lookups. Very simple, easy command to get you started for the Power User Certification.